Hi guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. This is another tutorial video about the new MG3 available in New Zealand, Australia and other parts of the world. In this video, I'll go through everything about the MG Pilot. So if you want to skip forward, click the timestamps down below on YouTube. Again, if you find this video helpful, do not forget to subscribe and like, that's the best way to support the channel. Let's turn the camera on and get started. Small disclaimer as always, for all these MG Pilot systems, many of them do not work if either the driver or the passenger do not wear seatbelts at all. As always, all these MG Pilot systems are not self-driving features, they do not take over the full control of the vehicle, you are still the main driver if you want to override it anytime, and also be responsible on the road when you drive the vehicle. First thing, to go into the MG Pilot system features, you want to swap the screen to the right and click the vehicle or click the vehicle over here. Under the vehicle, you find the MG Pilot on the screen. First thing is called Intelligent Drive. If you switch it off, that means there's no cruise control at all. You cannot switch on the cruise control, no matter whatever you do. Next is the limit. You can do manual limit or intelligent limit. In the manual limit, you can use the control functions on the left hand side of the steering control. This allows you to set a speed limiter. So press this, you can go up and down, just like that. Going up to 40 or whatever is showing the blue light. It means the vehicle will limit my throttle response. Whenever I reach 40, that's the limit. It's not going to allow me to go over 40. And then you can change it whenever you like, or you can cancel it whenever you like. When it's showing the white lines or gray lines, it just means there's no speed limiter anymore. In this instance, you are still driving the vehicle yourself, you brake, you accelerate, but the vehicle does not allow you to go over a certain limit. There's only one scenario, you can go over the certain limit momentumly, is to, by pressing the foot on the accelerator pedal all the way, that allows you to override that speed limiter momentumly, before you release the pedal again, then it will bring you back to whatever the speed limit that was. This function helps you to drive on the motorway if you want to have a little bit limit on your speed so you do not go over the speed limit, get any tickets or whatever, but you still enjoy the drive yourself. Next is called the intelligent. When you switch on the intelligent mode, that means the lines are still gray or white color, so it's not engaged just yet. When you are, still, when you are driving on the road, these speed signs will pick up the speed limit information. Let's say if it's 60 or 100 on motorway or wherever. If you wish to have that particular speed limiter that's read it out over here, click the here, that means it'll go a blue light now. Once it's on blue light, that means the vehicle will set your speed limiter based on the display. The display, of course, is just using the sensor to pick up the speed signs in front of you. If it's 100, limiter will be 100. 60, limiter will be 60. And to disengage that, again, press this to disengage. And just like the manual version, you can override that speed limiter momentarily by pressing your foot on the accelerator pedal all the way. Next function is called ACC, which means Adaptive Cruise Control for the full wording. That means you can, when you start driving the vehicle, you can press this button over here that will set at your current driving speed. The lowest set speed will be 30 if you're traveling less than 30. The highest speed will be more than using the speed limit, really. Anyway, it will set you at your current driving speed and the vehicle will travel on your current driving speed or set speed if the road is clear. When the road is not clear, the vehicle will see the front cars and will keep a safe distance between you and the front vehicle. To change that distance, you can go left and right. You'll see the bars change, I'll do it again. You can say three, two, or one, whatever you like. Now keep a safe distance between you and the front vehicle. You can choose the distance whenever you like. That's based on kind of your speed and time, whatever. There's no set distance or set meters of distance between you and the vehicle. Then if you do want to change your set speed, you can go up and down. Single click going up is by one kilometers per hour incremental. If your set speed is 60, it'll go 61, 62. If you push and hold, it'll go 65, 70, 75, 80, so on and so on. Same applies to going lower or decrease on the speed. Single click goes 59, 58. Push and hold, that means 55, 50, whatever. Whenever you wish to cancel the cruise control, simply apply the brake or single press this button. 
That means all the readings on here will go either white or gray light. That means the function is temporarily paused or canceled for now. If you want to resume back to cruise control again, flick it up, it will resume back to whatever set cruise control speed you were on before you cancel it, or simply flick it down, it will set at the current driving speed you were setting again. So that's how to work with the adaptive cruise control. In some scenarios, your vehicle will do cruise control, it will follow the front car coming to a complete stop, and your vehicle will go into a situation where it's ready to go again. In that situation, it's separated in two scenarios. The first scenario, if the vehicle in front of you stops for three seconds or less, and then that moves again, your car will automatically roll forward, resume back to the cruise control, you do not need to do anything. Second scenario, the vehicle in front of you slow down and stop for more than three seconds. And then it goes again. Your vehicle will tell you on the dashboard that you need to resume back to cruise control if you wish to use that again. So two ways to resume. One way is to flick it up to resume back to cruise control. Second way is to tap the accelerator. Just a gentle tap allows the vehicle to start rolling in motion and then the cruise control will be resumed again. Next function is called ICA, which is called Intelligent Cruise Control. This is more like an adaptive cruise control, but with a bit more assistance. That assistance is on the steering. So if you engage the ICA, you'll see the steering logo over there. That means that function is now on. Just means you can still use the adaptive cruise control, just like what we explained with the ACC. And additionally, the vehicle will also help you to steer in the center of the line marking or following in the front traffic. That depends on the situation in the game. When your cruise control is on, this, blue, this light will go blue, of course. And then if the steering functions omits and the steering will help you to steer, the steering function will go blue as well. If the steering function goes gray or white, whatever the color, uh, apart from the blue, it just means on that particular scenario, on that particular situation, at that particular time, the function is not available, the function is not engaged just yet. So that's about the ICA. Some people may not like the steering control, that's fine, go back to ACC. But if you like the steering control under the ACC, go to ICA. So that's how that works. While you are driving the vehicle, you can also have this additional function to quickly toggle between the ACC and ICA. Depends on if you need the steering control under this condition or the last scenario. All you need to do is just push and hold the cruise control button for about three seconds or so, then release. Right now it's on ICA, there we go, ICA is gone. Now ACC, so push and hold again, and release, ICA is engaged, steering control is engaged. That's how that works while you're driving the vehicle to quickly change between ACC and ICA. Next function is called Intelligent Overspeed Alert. You can disable or enable it. Enabling just means whenever the vehicle travels to a, to a place where there is a new speed sign displayed on the road, the vehicle sensor will pick up the speed sign as long as it's properly displayed and show you the speed limit information on the top, whether it's 60, 70, 100, whatever that needs. And then you can enable the disabled overspeed audible warning. Disabling that, it just means when the speed reads out 60, it will set 60 on the road. And when you go over 60, it will give you a small flashlight on the letters, and that's pretty much it. It does not give you anything else. But if you enable the overspeed audible warning, that just means when you go over 60, Let's say you are at 61, 62, it will give you three pings. Three pings, very gentle pings, but it will ping to let you know you are over that particular speed limit. So that's how that works with the over speed audible warning. Next is your speed limit change audible warning. If you enable that, it just means when the speed sign pick up 60, it will ping. That means it changes the speed limit, and then it changes to 30, ping, it will give you all the pings and all that things. I personally not a big fan of that, so I always disable that. But in many, many cars, for example, using Australian vehicles, this particular function is always on whenever you switch on the vehicle. Uh, even if you turn it on this time, and when you switch back on again, all these functions will go back on again. That's related to the newest safety regulation, I reckon. Um, there's nothing we can do about it as an MG dealership. It's just a small thing about those functions. 
Next, if we keep swiping down, we have the front collision assist. So this function you can enable and disable again, you will need to go click OK. And this is also the same thing with the speed limiter information, it will always switch on whenever you switch on the vehicle. Front collision assist means if the vehicle sees an objective at the front or car at the front and you are traveling along, you are likely to crash into it, it will give you alert and braking if necessary before you crash into something. Again, if you disable that, and that's all, that's all gone. But if you enable that, it just means you can enable alert or braking. Alert means it's only gonna give you warning. Braking means it'll give you warning and even, eventually emergency braking if necessary. You can change the sensitivity to low, medium or high, whatever you like. So that's up to you. Next, we have the land departure assist. You can enable and disable this function, but do remember they will always come on whenever you switch on the vehicle due to the, again, newest safety reg regulations. Switching off, that's it. And there's nothing available. You will see the orange light over there. That means that function is off. But switching it back on means you can change to uh, alert, assist, or yeah, okay. Alert means if you're traveling over 60 k per hour on the motorway, the vehicle will see the line marking in front of you, and then it will see the if you're going over the line marking or not, or getting too close to dangerously close to the line marking, it'll give you alert if you go over the line marking. Assist, that just means not only it'll give you alert, but also it'll give you a steering assist just before you go over that particular line marking when you are over the high speed, 60 k per hour. Yeah, okay, it just means a bit more aggressive handling, a bit more aggressive steering assist, if you're driving on motorway, it will try to steer sort of in between the line markings instead of bouncing you over the line marking. So again, depends on what you like, you can change it whenever you like. Do remember on the new MG3, you have a small drop down menu to quickly disable the ELK when you start the vehicle. Because every single time when you start the car, land departure assist is always on and it's always on ELK emergency line keeping. Next is the alert sensitivity, again, low, medium, high, whichever you like. You get an audible warning. If you do not want it, you can disable that. So it's only going to give you notification on your dashboard or warning sound, whatever. So up to you again. Rear driving assist, you can enable or disable the whole thing or enable it. Enabling it means on your side the windows, there are indicators and because the vehicle has sensors around the cars to show uh, what's coming behind you. If you're driving on motorway, driving on a faster lens or whatever, someone is traveling behind you, it'll give you indication on your wing mirror. So the yellow light will show up. That's called the blind spot detection. Land change assistance, if your yellow light is showing on the wing mirror and you are actually indicating left or right to that particular position, the uh, lights will flash to let you know that actually something crossing behind you. Next is rear cross traffic alert. If you're going reverse out of the car park, if an objective is moving left and right, either a car, a bike, or someone is running, it'll give you a warning on your wind mirror to let you know that someone traveling behind you so you do not go way too fast onto the reverse. Next is the driver fatigue monitoring. So if you're actually falling asleep or anything like that, it'll give you a warning on the driving part. Uh, throughout the vehicle, you can change the alert sensitivity to low, medium, or high. Uh, it's quite hard to trigger this, but in case you are actually falling asleep, um, the vehicle will give you a reminder. All right, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed the contents. If you do, do not forget to subscribe and like. That's the best way to support this channel. As always, do not forget to check the link in the description down below to check the full tutorial on the MG3. It's continuously updated until the last episode. Thanks for watching. I will see you next video.